So we have my assistant Natasha here and she's going to uh, help us with demonstrating how the shockwave works. She has a, a tennis elbow condition that I'm going to be utilizing the shockwave to treat as one of the treatments that uh, we've done on her and uh, so far it's been pretty successful for her and I'm going to demonstrate what we do. So just like a ultrasound, what we want is we want to use gel, ultrasonic gel, to, for conduction and better utilization of the sound and effectiveness. Now, I have the patient just, you know, exposed with the elbow. Uh, the unit itself, I'm going to be using a, what we call the um, focused headpiece. Uh, basically, uh, if you want to come a little closer, I could show you how this is. Uh, as you could see, it's a concave uh, applicator. Uh, the difference between this unit compared to other shockwave units is that this is a piezo effect, meaning um, it's crystals that line the, the applicator itself. As the electricity comes in, the, um, the crystals, they start vibrating and actually generate a sound pulse. Um, on this particular uh, unit, uh, the piezo wave two and the, the direct uh, applicator that I'm gonna be using, the sound pulse is one centimeter cube, so like a sugar cube type of a thing. Um, I could change the frequency. Uh, there are four factors that I could change and modify. I could change the frequency, which are, I use the, in her case, a maximum frequency of eight. That gives us three to five pulses per second. The intensity could be changed and the highest amount is 18. They're measured with uh, millimeter square per megajoules. By changing these head pieces right here, uh, we could actually change the depth of penetration. Could go as, um, shallow as a zero millimeter penetration all the way up to 30 and um, basically the next thing that I could uh, change or modify is the number of pulses in her case for the demonstration we're going to do about 500 pulses to see how the unit works and basically we have a foot paddle over here that I could control the pulses the intensity and so on and I'm going to start her at about actually a five intensity we apply the gel to the area and what we want to have is make sure that we have the head applicator directly on the area that we're treating. I'm going to disperse the gel and when we're ready we could go ahead and by stepping on this or utilizing the button here we could go ahead and uh, get the sound pulses going on. So mm -hmm. what you're going to be hearing is these are the sound pulses mm -hmm. and what we want to do is make sure that we hit all the uh, lateral epi area where the radial head is, the proximal radial head and we slowly move the applicator around right where the injured area is and we always want to ask the patient how intense is it. We always want to uh, make sure that we go to their tolerance and not above that. So how intense is it? On a zero to ten scale. Maybe like a four. Okay. Is that tolerable or should I go down? No, that's good. Okay. So we're going to continue with this. And we'll look at the number of pulses. We can see the total dosage, basically. Correct. And normally for an extra spinal area, like an elbow or shoulder, um, I do about 3,000 pulses, depending on the patient, how large or small they are. Um, you know, I might modify that for a taller or bigger person that we're covering a larger area. I might be doing actually 4,000 pulses or, you know, somewhere around that area. But we also want to make sure that we hit all the um, extensor tendons as well as they come into that lateral epi area. And I like to kind of cover a larger area as I go down the, uh, the back of the forearm to make sure that the belly of the muscles are also uh, affected because this breaks up the fibrosis and adhesions within the muscle and not just the scar tissue around the joints. Right. Are you still doing okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. So one of the things about scar tissue is that it could, and adhesions, let's explain that a little bit. Uh, so adhesions and fibrosis, think about uh, the analogy of it as uh, like cobweb that forms within the muscle. Mm -hmm. uh, scar tissue, I uh, would like to use the analogy of um, uh, basically rust mm -hmm. that forms on a surface or around the joint area. And as, as we're utilizing this, it's kind of like sandblasting a surface. It breaks up all that scar tissue 
And, uh, That's a good analogy, sandblasting. Yeah, and uh, by utilizing sound pulses only, and no mm -hmm. electricity, nothing. And as we do that, especially right here, as I'm irritating that periosteum, which is the sheet covering the bone, and where the tendon attaches, because we're creating micro traumas, it also causes new blood supply going in mm -hmm. there. So as a new su blood supply going in, one of the things that shockwave does is creates neovascularization or new blood supply mm -hmm. formation, which leads to faster healing process and recovering from the condition. Right. That's why it becomes so effective. Mm -hmm. Now the other thing that, uh, keep in mind again, this is not an ongoing treatment. Um, the number of treatments usually is about seven to 10 per area. And then we follow up with the patient two to six months, once a month after the last treatment to make sure that, you know, things are, you know, improving and where the patient is at. And uh, if the patient by the second or third month, they tell me that, uh, you know, they're about 90, 95% better, basically they're done. But sometimes they say, well, they plateau that about 80, 85% improvement. In that case, I might decide to do one, two or three more additional treatments. Uh, basically to get rid of whatever that residuals mm -hmm. that are remaining. Hmm. Sorry, give it more intense. Hmm? Sorry, give it more intense. Is that right, right over here, huh? Mm -hmm. Do you want me to turn it down? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go down. 